stitchers welcome back to my channel this is Christine here and I decided to start this uh, next floss tube video off with doing sort of a vlogging style um, in an attempt to upload in a timely manner so we are starting today I just uploaded my last month's video the long overdue video uh, yesterday so I'm getting off to a good start already today is Thursday April 15th normally tax day but I think they moved it this year to May 15th but today is the kickoff for the Blue Ribbon Designs tax day sale and I just wanted to pop in here real quick and show you that I've pulled the floss to get started and I've got my fabric which I'm just going to you know do my boring old fiddler's Ada I'm going to do 16 count and um yeah this is what I'm going to get started on today. So these are the floss. I'm just going to use the DMC uh, equivalents. And I think that I'm going to start up in that corner right there with the owl. I was going to do the, I might do part of the lettering just to find my place on the fabric. I might get started on that, maybe do one word, but then I want to go down and actually start getting into the part, um, the, the fun part, so to speak. And I am really excited about this because even in April, I feel like stitching fall. And look at those colors. Okay, so maybe I'll check in either tomorrow or later today to show you how much I've gotten done. So, yep, I just pulled my floss from my master set right there, which is double-sided. You can see down in the basement there, there's another layer. You flip it over. I've showed those many that, that uh, container many times many times on my channel um, and I did want to remind you if you see anything you like in my videos if if I can put a link to it on Amazon I will do that I have an affiliate Amazon store down in the links and if you click on that I usually put a list of all my either favorite things or things that are on my wish list and yeah there's some fun stuff there if you ever want to take a look okay let's uh, check in a little bit later and see how far I get on this all right, it's the next day, and I just wanted to show you what I did yesterday, which isn't much. Uh, but I did get a start for the sal, and I actually did a little bit more, but I then unstitched it because I couldn't decide if I wanted to do one strand or two. Now I'm on 16 count, so the chart calls for the lettering to be done in two strands, and then the rest of the chart to be done in one strand, but the model was stitched on I think a 40 count so that definitely makes more sense so what I did is I thought for 16 count yeah I'll do two so I started and did the lettering in two strands and then I did a test a little test swatch to see if I wanted to do the rest of it in one or two and I like the way the one looked and then I decided I would go back and do the lettering in one because then the lettering looked too bold so yeah although it's not amazing coverage for 16 count. I kind of like the, you know, rustic old time sampler charm of actually seeing the stitches. So I have decided to just do one strand on 16 count and we'll see how it goes. But yes, didn't uh, just got the, the top border of the first square right here. That's the one I'm going to work on. And didn't do, uh, didn't have very much time to stitch yesterday. And then in the evening, I wanted to work on balloon glow because I don't want to put that off to the side. So let me pull that over here and just kind of show where I'm at with that. Let's move this. Okay. Now, I would like to continue on working on the sky. And then I moved down to this corner and I'm going to fill in these stitches here. All the holes that you see down here are just one color. So I'm going to work on filling that in and then work a little bit more over on the water. So that's my plan for this month to work on that. We'll see. It'll probably be pretty slow going, but yeah. Okay, that's it for now. I'll check in in a bit. Hi, Stitchers. Welcome to another day in the life of a cross stitcher. It's a bit of an overcast day today, so I've got some light coming in from the window. Let's hope that it's going to be bright enough for you to see this. So it's Wednesday, April 21st. 
I didn't check in yesterday. I had every intention to of checking in yesterday because it was a special day. April 20th is my birthday. So I was faced with the dilemma that every stitcher is faced with on their birthday. And that is, how do you celebrate stitching wise? There's always that question, do I start something new? Do I just go and buy a bunch of patterns? Do I stitch on my favorite whip? Um, all of the above? None of the above? That's always the question. So I started the day working on this because I had already had it started and um, I was going to just finish off the little square I was working on. So without further ado, let's just see how far I got with that. Let me look in my camera and see if it's uh, showing up okay. All right, so I finished that block and let me grab my scissors here. I did some of the lettering and finished the block and started on the next block. And I think it is just the cutest little, sweetest little design. Um, I originally had the eyes stitched with this dark color, but they blended right in with it being just one strand. So I was like, well, let me play around and see maybe using a different color. And when I unstitched it, I thought that looks good without any stitching in the eyes. So I think leaving the eyes unstitched works for me. And uh, like I said, I'm doing the DMC equivalents on this, so it doesn't look quite as variegated as it does in the picture. Let me take it out of the bag so you can not have a glare. Um, and my phone, I don't think, focuses real good, but you can see the colors are a little bit var more variegated in the sample. But I think mine is turning out just perfect. And my threads are kind of a bit of a mess there, so we'll just cover that up. Okay, so I finished that, and I didn't have a lot of stitching time on my birthday. So uh, I had some work to do in the middle of the day, so I worked on this, and then um, it, I thought to myself, well, let me go look through. I didn't, I didn't want to buy anything new uh, stitching-wise because I have so many patterns, and I thought, you know what, even if I had the sort of the inkling to go buy something I'm like let me just go look through my stash and look and see what I've got going well almost one of the first things I saw was this work in progress let me move this off to the side here was this one right here now I have many and I was tempted to do them all but for some reason and I think it's because I'm doing my let me make sure this is in frame for you guys um, since I've been doing my, starting my cut flower garden, this one jumped out at me as one that I want to work on. It just called to me louder than all the rest. And I started this last year for a special occasion, and I don't remember what, but I do know that I barely got a start in, uh, like, at the end of the day. This is a kit, actually. I, I don't know if I mentioned that. It's not just a pattern. Her, she has a lot of patterns, but this one is specifically a kit. So it comes with the, the fabric and everything. Now, I, I'll have to look at my Instagram to see when I started this, but I know, I do remember that I just got to start in very at the end of the day. So um, I will put across the bottom of the screen when I what the special occasion was last year of when I started this. And I didn't make much progress at all. And then yesterday... I didn't have any time to stitch the rest of the day, so I didn't do any stitching on this. But now that I have it pulled out, I'm definitely going to work on that, especially because I finished the square in the other one, the block that I wanted to do. So I think this one, uh, sooner or later here, I'm going to try to get some stitches in. I don't have a lot of time to stitch today either, but I will try to get a few stitches in. So uh, that's what the plan is for today and it looks like I've lost a thread here. What another thing I want to get done today is this little project that I stitched that I showed in my last video. This is by Blue Ribbon Designs and I uh, have it somewhat finished just a little bit. It's kind of halfway there and I want to go ahead and get that fully finished so I grabbed just a bunch of different trims and ribbons 
that I have been collecting. I got a couple of uh, Lady Dot Creates, Rick Rack, and some vintage pom poms, which I think definitely we're going to be using some of those in this. So sometime today, or okay, I'm not even going to say today, sometime before the next clip that you see, I would like to have this one fully finished. So this is a blue ribbon designs pattern called Under My Wing, and the pattern comes with both the version for a bluebird and a redbird. So very, very cute. Uh, she has, I've talked about this before, but she has the instructions to finish it in one of the vintage ball jar lids. And I didn't have one of those on hand, but I have the other ball jar lid. So I sort of just uh, attempted, I'm attempting my own finish. I took some cardboard and, you know, raised it by gluing some cardboard together. And this is actually wrapped around the, uh, the lid insert that, you know, the metal part that goes inside the lid. So that's what I actually put the batting and stitched to that around. So uh, I'll probably do some kind of a hanging ornament type finish on it. But super cute, super cute. Okay, I think that's all I have for you today and I'll check in uh, as soon as I've got something good to show. As I was putting my stuff away, I forgot that I was going to actually talk. You may have noticed that I had a quilt in the background because I usually have this ratty old tablecloth that I record on and it's just kind of boring. So I thought, oh, I'll put a nice background. And um, I just wanted to mention, I made this quilt quite a few years ago. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I used to have a machine quilting business. I had one of the long arm quilting machines in my basement and I used to do that as a business. So this is one of the quilts that I made and machine quilted on my Gamel quilting machine. And it's, yeah, it's just really cute. I did some, I, I did, I think I did the applique with a machine, it was machine appliqued. But, oh, I thought maybe you guys might wanna just see that a little bit uh, up close. I have some videos in the past where I went through and showed all of the quilts that I've made back when I used to be a quilter, which is many years ago and I was was uh, looking because when I did have my quilting business, I used to take pictures of the quilts that I used to quilt for other people on, when it was still on my machine. And I thought that those pictures were lost, but I found them all online in a folder. And if anybody is interested in seeing the quilts, they were beautiful. Like I said, they weren't my quilts, but they were my quilting. So... Yeah, I'll be happy to show those instead of keeping them stuffed away on uh, online in a folder somewhere because they're really beautiful quilts. So let me know if that's something you're interested in and I'll do that probably in a separate video. That way those that aren't interested in quilting don't need to watch it. Okay, here you go. Just some quilting eye candy for you. Good morning and welcome to my last installment of my vlog for April. It's the morning of April 29th and I have I'm recording this today because I get my second Pfizer vaccine tomorrow and I'm not exactly sure what to expect so I'm hoping for the best but also preparing for the worst. This morning I am drinking the last of my peppermint bark donut shop coffee that uh, I had a bunch of this around Christmas time and then I sort of got burned out on the flavor and I had this one lingering pod and I thought today was a day for peppermint bark. So that's what I'm drinking this morning. Okay, let's get started because this is going to be an update of what I've stitched since the last clip that you saw and also a very rough sort of, do I wanna do stitch mania? Yeah, maybe I should but what do I want to do? And I have four different plans. So yeah, it's going to be uh, a little bit of that at the end. Okay, let's, like I said, let's get started. One more drink here. Okay. So in the last clip, I showed you that I was going to pull this out and start working on this Margolin Baston pattern that I had started on World Cross Stitch Day. Uh, I had to go back and look at Instagram to see when that was. So yes, um, I had barely gotten anything started. And so I picked this up again, started working on it. And I have to say, 
all other projects have now gone to the wayside because I'm obsessed with this and I couldn't put it down and I am excited to show you how much I got done. Okay, look at that. Now, I'm really hoping that that's in focus. I'm using my back camera instead of my front camera, so I don't really know what you're seeing, but the camera quality is like 100% better and it focuses really nicely. So I'm guessing that you can see this and actually let me just get a feel for where I need to, where my camera is, yes, so, okay which is weird, way over at the side. Okay, so apparently you can see that pretty well right there. The colors on this are so what I'm feeling right now with all my gardening that I'm doing and all my seed planting, and I just love pinks and oranges. Everything about this project, I, I just love, and I can't put it down. So that is, so here's a refresher again of how it's going to look. Um, let me take it out of here because you can probably see it a little bit better. Okay, so, yeah, if you look at what I've done so far, this out of the way a little bit, to what I've done compared to what's left, you can see that I've got a pretty good amount of it done already. There's just not that much left. I mean, it's definitely... Um, well, okay, if I'm doing the whole design, including the butterflies at the bottom, then I'm a little over probably a quarter, maybe a third of the way done. But I don't think I'm going to stitch these butterflies. I may, but I'm not sure because um, a lot of Marjolaine Baston's patterns, a lot of the motifs are repeated, and you'll see maybe a motif, a watering can or something in one of her patterns and then you'll see it kind of appear in a little slightly different way in another pattern. So I'm pretty sure that I've stitched almost these exact butterflies before and I may not stitch them, but I'll have to look. I actually grabbed that project and I'm going to look at those butterflies and see if they're much different. But if I don't, I mean, just this itself is going to be an amazing pattern. I mean, that is the part that I love. So I may just do that and if so, then I'm like more, you know, probably halfway done with this already. And it's just, oh yeah, and like this, none of this right here is stitched, so that's background right there. So I could easily get this done. So that's kind of gonna be the segue into why my mania plans are sort of keep changing and they're sort of up in the air because I, I'm torn because when I was looking through this project and I was looking through all my works and progresses and I have, I don't know, probably somewhere between 15 and 20, I don't know, but I love all of my works and progresses. I love them all so much and looking at them all, I want to stitch every one of them. So I really want to do Whip Mania oh, where I work on each one of them for like a day or two. That's what I really wanted. That's one of the things I really want to do. But then I had this idea last year that I would do Robin Mania, where I was going to get all my patterns that have American Robins. And I was going to show you those, but they're all sort of buried in all sorts of different cabinets, and some of them are PDFs, and um, I couldn't easily just bring them and show you. But I have a lot. Needless to say, I wouldn't be able to stitch them all. So um, that was a plan I had originally had. And then I started working on this, and it started making me feel like, oh, I have a bunch of Marjolaine Baston patterns and kits. And I could very easily do a Marjolaine Mania. So mm, I'm really thinking, I'm really feeling like that's what I might want to do. However, it doesn't stop there. Um, Recently, Mill Hill came out with their all a bunch of new releases for their autumn. They have like the autumn series, you know, their spring bouquet and then their autumn series. I can't remember what it's called, but they had a bunch of new releases. And I have to say, I think they released 12 new project, uh, 12 new, but six buttons and beads and six of the small ones. And I think I bought maybe 10 out of the 12. <laughs> which I will show you here in a minute. So I was thinking, oh, maybe I should do Mill Hill Mania again like I did last year. But then I thought maybe I should save those all for the fall and do Flossoween again and stitch those all in October. 
I just, as you can see, I'm waffling here. And then there's the idea of, do I even want to do Stitch Mania? Because it's a lot to undertake, and I've, I've got a lot of things going on in me. So, you can see my problem here. I think it's going to end up being just a surprise. And what you're going to see is at the end of May, I'm going to come back on here and show you what I ended up doing. Because I really, as of today, still don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm leaning heavily toward Marjolaine Bast in May. Because, that being said, I've got this that I want to continue working on. So I for sure want to go with that. Plus, let me show you uh, the work in progress that I already have of hers. Let's see. Oh, before I do that, let's just let's just do a little bit of a a margolin whip, and I mean a finish parade. This is one that I stitched of hers a couple years ago. Let me make sure I'm in frame. Yes. So pretty, so soft, and I love that. I didn't do the border. I think it had a gingham border around the edge, but I ended up not doing that. So there's that. Now about the butterflies that I was just talking about in this pattern. So these are the butterflies that I said I might not stitch because when I did the uh, Four Seasons pattern, uh, let's just unroll this. So there, can you see those butterflies right there? Those three, they look very similar. Well, let's just compare. I really hope I'm staying in frame. Let's just compare. I mean, you can see they're very close to the same butterflies. So I don't know. There's a lot of uh, tedious little stitching in that. I'll decide. I'll decide when I get there whether or not I'm going to do the butterflies. But as you can see, I kind of have already stitched some of her butterflies. So let's just unroll this so we can remember how gorgeous this pattern is. Oh, why have I never framed this? It's not going to all fit in the frame. So. What we're going to have to do here is just unroll it like that. I think I'm still in the frame, but so it's the four seasons and you've got, you know, kind of the fall over here. This is the winter. This, oh, this little center area here. I mean, these motifs are just so pretty. I just love stitching this so pretty. Okay. Yes, I can just stare at that all day. Okay, let's let's put this away. It needs a good ironing. It needs a good framing is what it needs. Yes, I know. Let's not talk about my inability to really ever, hardly ever frame anything. Ah, oh, yes, we won't talk about that. Okay, I'm gonna put that off to the side and put this one off to the side. This is relatively bright compared to her other ones. Then the work in progress that I have is this one. And I pulled this out last night because I was looking at it, trying to decide, do I want to do Margolin Mania? And when I pulled this out, I actually forgot how far I had gotten on this. It's called Pumpkins. Now, okay, keep in mind, these are, this is a kit, this is a kit, but those other two I did were just the patterns. So... I was actually pleasantly surprised at how much I had actually gotten done on this when I unrolled it. Sorry, it's not it's not ironed, obviously. Let me make sure we're in frame. Oop, don't want to accidentally do some coffee dyeing on my corner there. Okay. Oh, this is so pretty. This is so pretty. And I really have gotten a lot done on it. So if I did Margolin Mania, I could get some good progress on this. I could potentially even finish the one I'm working on. And then I would definitely treat myself to some new starts. Probably not a bunch of new starts, but at least a couple of new starts. And as a reminder of all the ones that I have in my collection of Margolin patterns is this stack right here. Okay, so I have this one, uh, just a small one, and it's a kit. So 
I could do that. I'm, I'm assuming it looks a little bit more colorful than this picture shows. You know, things always look a little bit better. So there's that. I could start a real small one. And then there's this one, which I'm really leaning heavily towards because it's also small and it's also a kit. And I feel like if it goes as fast as this one, then I could just whip this one out in no time at all. Maybe even get another finish in May. So, ooh, yes, that looks good. Uh, then there's this one, which I do love this one too, and it's also a kit, and that's why I'm kind of I'm kind of drawn to the ones that are kits because I have everything I need. This is one I would absolutely for sure start because I've been wanting to stitch this one forever. Now, it is not a kit, it's just a pattern, so I would have to kit up and figure out what kind of fabric I want to use, and I think it just calls for DMC, but oh, this one's definitely going to be probably one of the top ones that I start, but I think maybe I'll only allow myself to start this one if I actually get another one finished, because this one's kind of big. Then there's this one, which is one I've really always wanted to start to. <laughs> I want to start them all. This is how it looks when it's done. So it's just this row of birds. Oh, once again, not a kit, so I'd have to, uh, I would have to, yeah, figure out if I have this stuff on hand for that. So I don't know. I'm kind of thinking that the ones that aren't kits are going to be probably not started. I don't know. I just, I just feel like I'm too busy in May to to try to figure out that. Oh, this one too, I love the soft. This almost kind of reminds me of fall, like harvest time. So, you know, yeah, summer fruit, it's called. I love on the back, you can see all of her other designs, but you can see what I mean though. It's like, you know, the watering can with the strawberries here, and then you kind of see the a little bit different rendition of the strawberry with the watering tin here. Um, you see the eggs here, and then you see them again there, just a different, little different rendition of it. So she has a lot of repeat designs that look always just a little bit different, but I just love them. I love, 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 love. I've just renewed my love. I knew I loved her stuff, but just stitching them again has kind of renewed. And they go so fast. They're just really easy to stitch because there's hardly any back stitching. This one's so pretty. Uh, where was I? Okay, I think we're getting down to the end here. This is a book I have called Summer Bouquets, and it has four different, fairly good size. Yeah, these are some good size. I mean, that's like, I think, all full coverage around there. But out of all of them, I love this one, and I actually printed out a working copy of that already. So that's probably a little bit too uh, involved to get something that big started. But... I do love it. And then last but not least is this one, which I absolutely love. And it was a gift. And uh, I was gifted all the floss too. So it's kind of almost like a kit because all I need to do is provide the fabric. And it's just waiting to be started. The only thing that I'm hesitant about is that there's a lot of brown in this, a lot of browns and beiges. And so um, I'm kind of feeling a little bit more of uh, something a little more colorful right now. So I'm going to probably hold off on that one. Maybe. I don't know. I can't decide, but I I'm going to give it some thought. Okay, let me move all that to the side. Take a drink of some uh, coffee and uh, let's get started to the next thing. So I told you, I promised you that I was going to show you all my new Mill Hill kits and why I'm also thinking Mill Hill Mania might be a thing. <sighs> okay. Oh, but before I do that, I almost forgot. I have a finish to show you, a fully finish. I finished my little ornament in the lid by Blue Ribbon Designs, the under my wing pattern. I sat myself down since I said I was going to try and do that finish, fully finish this month. I thought, well, I better sit down and do it. So I went ahead and took some vintage pom-poms, uh, what's up, the pom-pom trim from Lady Dot Creates, 
And then I took some ribbon around the side here. I went to just do this like uh, dark brown ribbon, but then it didn't lay flat because the, the tin lid is sort of goes to a taper and it was kind of wobbly down here. So I took some of uh, Lady Dot Creates vintage Rick Rack and ended up gluing that there. And yes, the whole thing is glued. I didn't do any stitching with this finishing. I just, I glued, glued everything. And uh, that's how it looks. Oh, no, I'm, I lied. I did stitch one thing because I couldn't get, I can't get a bow to look nice no matter how hard I try. And really to get a bow to look nice, you kind of have to use some stitching to sort of stitch it in place. So I did do a little tacking stitches on uh, the back of this bow here to get it to stay. And yeah, so isn't that cute? I think this camera focuses a little better so you can see the little few little changes I did. So I changed the colors of the flowers to yellow so they look like daffodils. And then I put a little eye, white eye ring around my robin and changed the colors to a little bit more orange color. And then got the C there for my initial. You're supposed to tuck a little needle under the wing because that's called under my wing. Um, and I was going to wait and do that when I was finished. So um, I still need to do that, uh, stick the, the needle in there. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show is my uh, newest Mill Hill kits that I just bought. My bag from, uh, my Mommelly bag from Eclectic Possessions, and it's chock full, chock full of some good stuff here. So let's start with the small ones. First of all, there's this one right here called Pumpkin Delivery. And you know me and the blue truck, so I absolutely had to have this one. And I love that it has pumpkins in the back because wasn't I just saying with that other project I'm stitching from Dimensions that has the blue truck with the flowers in the back? And I said, wouldn't it be cool if I had one that had a blue truck with, with pumpkins in the back? And then Mill Hill delivered. So... There's that one. Then I've got this one here called Enchanted Moon. And it uh, is a lot like one of the pumpkins that they have in, that they came out with last year that was just orange and black. And then this, of course, is a moon. Who can resist that? Okay, so Enchanted Moon. Next up, okay, I had to have the newest version of the Flamingo called uh, Fall Flamingo, and it's so cute. He's wearing a little hat. I can't remember what that hat is called. I don't know. Derby hat? I don't know. But he's got the little scarf. So cute, and it's a bonus that it's orange and blue because uh, in Colorado, yes, Bronco fever is alive and well. So he's wearing a Bronco sweater. I mean, a Broncos scarf. Cute. He's all ready to go to a, a football game. Okay, then this one is called Halloween Owl. It is so cute. Kind of a little whimsical little owl. And I think that that is uh, the four. Yes, that's, that's the only four of the small ones out of the six I got. The one I did, the two I didn't get is there was one that's um, a raccoon, which I didn't get. And I can't remember what the last one was that I didn't, that I chose not to get. I, I can't remember, but I had to stop somewhere. Okay, then I got four of the buttons and beads. Newest ones, this one's called Autumn Swing. Everything you love about fall. In there, the fall tree, the farm, the tractor, the cows, the swing, yeah, everything. So it's Buttons and Beads Country Lane. All right. And there's this one right here. It's called Floral Pumpkin. And it's just got all of the stuff that you love about fall in it also. <laughs> Just this big bouquet of all the pumpkins and the gourds and the leaves. And the colors are just great. So as you can see, 
I'm tempted to do these all right now, but then again, they would be really fun to stitch all these in the fall. So I think I'm leaning toward doing these in October. I think that's where, what I'm thinking. I don't know, that could change. Two more. I didn't get all of the big ones either, but I, I got four out of the six. So then there's the outdoor adventure, which is just a lovely scene, camping with the tents and the canoe and all the fall colors on the tree, which I love. So these are all a little bit more fall based, um, whereas a lot of times they're more Halloween, kind of geared around Halloween, but these were more uh, this year geared more around fall, except for, oh yeah, I think one of the ones I didn't get is a one of the witches, a, sort of a whimsical witch. Uh, I don't remember what the name of it was, but this one is probably my favorite, Spooky Yate. Look at that. It's just got these this beautiful fall sunset, the little black cat button, the stone pillars. Oh, I just love this with some of the fall colors down on the bottom here. I cannot wait to start that one. That's gonna be one of those that I started and I'm not gonna put it down until I finish it. You heard it here. Okay, uh, oh no, there's one more. This one fell out of the bag. Okay, so I got five out of the six of the small ones, and the one that I couldn't remember was one that I bought. This one right here called Fall Fun, and it's just, it uh, looks a lot like the one that they did last year, that it was similar to this that said, come stitch for a spell, but this has got the little sign with the pumpkin patch that way, apple picking that way, corn maze that way. Love, love, love that one. Okay. I almost bought all 12. Okay, it was close. All right, um, I think that that wraps up what it is that I'm going to talk about for this month. I don't think that I finished anything more on my uh, blue ribbon designs. Mm, let me go get that because I may have done just a little bit more. I can't remember what the last clip showed. Let me go get that and see. Okay, um, yes, because the last clip, you saw it, but it's been a few days, so I forgot what I stitched on this. So let's pull this out and see. So you will know if I've gotten any farther on this or not. I do remember I had finished this, so I think the only thing I may have done if I did anything is... Uh, few more of the wording, a few more letters in the words, and then I started this border, but I may have had that done. But like I said, I started that, the spring bouquet, the uh, Margeline Baston, which I should say that Margeline Baston, all her kits are through uh, Lenart or Lenarte, her patterns, that's who uh, publishes her designs. But yeah, once I started that, then everything else went to the wayside, even though looking at this now makes me really want to stitch this too, so. And I think the only other thing that I worked on since the last clip is uh, I did a little bit more on Balloon Glow, and I don't think that I showed you my update on that. And I had mentioned that I wanted to finish filling in all the area down here, and I can't remember if I had done that in the last clip when I showed you. But in case I didn't show you that, then I'll show you it again. And then once again, I put this away and haven't touched it since. So. But I'm happy I did get a lot of progress done on this, this last time that I pulled it out. And yes, I don't think I'll be touching this again in May. I got too many other things going. I haven't even thought about what my plans are going to be in June, but maybe I'll get back to this. And then of course I haven't touched Winter Cabin either. Yes, I need to get back to that. Okay, well, I think this is gonna wrap up my vlog for this month and uh, I'll have to figure out if I'm going to do a vlog for May. Uh, that'll depend, either that or I may just do an update at the end. But you won't see me until May, until the end of May, and you'll see what I ended up doing for Stitch Mania. So if you're stu doing something for Stitch Mania, let me know down in the comments or um, chime in on what you think I should do. If you were to choose something for me, what would it be? I can't say I'll listen to you guys, but I am curious to see what you all think. Okay, um, oh yeah, I think I had also had the 
rough idea that I was going to just uh, start some more Dimensions kits, too. Oh, so many ideas. So many ideas. Okay, I'm just thinking out loud now. I'm going to go ahead and get this uploaded, and I'll see you at the end of May. Happy Stitch Mania. Happy stitching.